When we see a major part on a partisan basis of our government try to undercut and kill the negotiations while they are going on at this very moment in Geneva, then that goes a step too far. Let's get back to work. Joined once again by political analyst and founder and director of the University of Virginia Center for Politics, Larry Sabato, and part of the party now, political commentator and the author of Hand to Mouth, Living in Bootstrap America, Linda Torado. Linda, good to see you again. Hey, happy to be here. Larry, I'm going to go ahead and start you off right now with this whole deal about the Iranian letter. The Republicans sending it along. Either the Republicans are trying to help the Iranians right now. They are traitors. It's treasonous at this point. And I actually have heard some people, insiders in the Beltway, say today, what's the big deal? This is not really anything that people need to be concerned about. Your take. The uh, Congress is a co-equal branch. And uh, therefore, they're entitled to send any letters they want. I mean, uh, it's certainly not treasonous. You can argue about whether it's the wisest way to influence the policy, but you certainly can't call it treasonous. That's well within their rights as a co-equal branch of government. What about that whole idea of the fact that maybe they're trying to undermine the president at this point with regard to a lot of these negotiations? Some people say that the negotiations are so tender at this point, the president may not need any sort of undermining. Well, clearly, they don't believe the president's moving in the right direction. Uh, they've been elected too, and they want to advocate for their point of view. The, the truth is, I think, at least privately, they would say, yes, we are trying to undermine him. We don't want this agreement with Iran. Uh, and again, that's their privilege as, a, as members of a co-equal branch of government, having been elected by their own constituencies. Linda, how do you see this? Because a lot of people are up in arms about it, and quite frankly, some people say it's no big deal. Which side of the fence are you on? I mean, it was stupid, short-sighted, narrow-minded, and guaranteed to add to tensions in a region that we really can't afford tensions to be added to. It was such a bad idea that now you've got coverage this morning. I read, uh, you know, GOP staffers on background are saying, oh, it was a joke. It was a lighthearted attempt to remind people that we're players. And when you're joking about nuclear weapons during negotiations, I think that that says something about your judgment. Was it treason? Absolutely not. It doesn't meet the definition. Was it stupid and harmful? and probably not the best thing for the country? Absolutely. And I think that when it comes down to dueling scandals, you've got the Clintons being Clintons, and you've got the Republicans trying to actually do diplomacy on a partisan basis. Um, so, you know, as far as things that are important, this is a huge deal. Um, treason, no, but a huge deal, yes, and absolutely a bad idea. Larry, we get a lot of people here telling us that things can't get any worse, and this absolutely will make things worse between the Congress and the President. But from your perspective, could it really get any worse? I mean, honestly, we talk about the anger that goes on between Congress and the president at this point, but it seems as if nothing is really going to help this any at all, and this can't make it any worse, can it? Well, things can always get worse, but look, the voters ordered up gridlock. That's what they've done. They put both houses of Congress under nominal Republican control. The truth is, as we now know, Speaker Boehner doesn't control the House, and Mitch McConnell doesn't control the Senate because you need 60 votes. Uh, but the, the voters elected a Democratic president, and they've elected in a separate election uh, Republicans uh, to run nominally both houses of Congress. That means gridlock in a polarized era, and we are in a very polarized era. One stat, one, one little data point that proves what I'm saying. Today, unlike most of American history, the most liberal, the most uh, conservative, Democrat is more liberal than the most liberal Republican, counting both houses of Congress together. That is, the two parties are disjoint sets in terms of philosophy. I got about a minute left here. Linda, I wanted to get your take on this quickly and then quickly to, uh, to uh, Larry at this as well. The war authorization vote that is going on today right now, the Senate Foreign Relations Committee is meeting right now. Should they give the president what he wants? Should they give him his desire to go ahead and create the war that he wants? I um, have trouble every time that we authorize a war because I don't ever think that we think them through fully. That said, you know, an authorization is not the same thing as actually starting a war. So, um, you know, give them the vote and then make clear that you're absolutely not going to fund it until that case has been sold to the public in a way that we haven't seen in the last two wars we've engaged in. Larry, about 30 seconds left. Your take on this? Well, the president 
probably has inherent powers to conduct the war on his own. It is always preferable, though, if you can get the Congress to authorize it, because the more unified the country is, the more bipartisan the war is, then obviously the more likely the American people are to support it, and that means support the troops who are there. So uh, it's probably wiser to pass it than not, but that's, uh, that's an independent branch's determination, and they're elected and we're not. And they're just getting started. This will be going on for quite some time. We bid farewell for the moment to Larry Sabato. Reminder, he's author of the soon-to-be-released book, The Surge, 2014's big GOP win and what it means for the next presidential cycle. I believe. Thank you. Presidential election. There it is. Linda Toronto also stays with us here momentarily when we come back. Larry, thank you very much. We'll talk to you again. Linda, we'll talk to you in just a couple of minutes as Midpoint continues.